The marketplace is shifting focus from discounts to the user's buying experience. Online beauty marketplace, Purple, with its strong tech backbone, is leading the charge. With minimum investment, Purple is already profitable on an EBITDA basis in key markets. It's now investing in the next big disruption in the tech world, bots. Users can already engage with Purple's bots on Facebook Messenger and will soon be able to do so via WhatsApp chat. The future looks exciting at purple.com. Hello and welcome. You're with us here on E-Inc. With all the buzz in the beauty business, so who better to have on the show at this time than the founder of one of the major players in the space, Purple, Manish Taneja. Thanks so much for joining us, Manish. Thank you, Abba. Now, it's a fantastic story here that you've got. I mean, this is a classic case of, you know, an ex-IIT and, of course, your co-founder, Rahul, as well, uh, getting into uh, this business, learning through your mistakes and turning profitable at the end of four yes, years. Yes. So, start from the beginning. Yeah. What made two uh, boys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> young boys yeah. out of IIT, get yes. into the makeup business? Yeah. So, um, I think, long story short... Um, so we were flatmates in Bombay, um, serendipity. Um, um, by chance, we got to stay together. Uh, I was working at Fidelity's private equity arm in India, and Rahul was uh, working with Tata's uh, uh, group as a as a TAS employee, Tata Administrative Services. Uh, both of us were discussing ideas. I think entrepreneurship was high on our mind. Um, both of us were very clear that we would do something in the internet space. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is our generation to work in internet. There was always this itch to do mm -hmm. something on your own. Uh, I think we chose beauty as a category. Uh, it was a purely business call. Um, we felt that it, because of the diversity in the supply mm -hmm. and the fragmentation, it was right to be disrupted by an internet platform. Okay. So there are, I think, about 1 lakh beauty products sold in India. Mm -hmm. And I think there are about almost like 80,000 salons in 35 cities, yes. right? Uh, so given the fragmentation, we felt that internet would be the right platform to disrupt it, to help people discover the right products, the right services and the right content. Right. Hence, we decided to jump. It was late 2011. Uh, 2012, we started Purple. Mm -hmm. um, I can speak about the learnings. I mean, yeah. I think they'll be important for anybody watching yeah, this absolutely. show. absolutely. Because it was a, a slow and steady process. Yeah, it's, it's been very slow and yeah, steady. You raised yeah. your angel round pretty much off the bat. Yeah. And then it took you a couple of years before you raised uh, the I'll next round from yeah. Ivy yes. uh, once again. Uh, so in the middle, there was a quite uh, a lot of uh, you know process shifting, figuring out what was working, what yeah. wasn't. Honestly, two key learnings, yeah. honestly. Uh, so one... Uh, I think uh, focus on people, yeah. uh, they help make your or break your business. Uh, so set the DNA right. Mm. Uh, the two co-founders or the three co-founders cannot do all the work. And therefore, it's important that the next layer in the company yeah. is equally motivated and equally skilled to do the job. Uh, I think we've made a fair share of errors here. Mm. Uh, uh, do not always go for the experience. Okay. It also comes with a lot of baggage. And we've felt it okay. uh, in exactly. our business. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think go for the right attitude. Mm -hmm. I think aptitude can always be built, right? And skill can always be built. Right. The second big learning, uh, mm -hmm. and I would urge everybody to think potentially that way, is I think always think about engines mm -hmm. or processes and not think about events. So okay. what I mean by that is, I think once you set something in motion, it should run on its own mm. and it should not need an intervention from a co-founder. Okay. Right. So, for example, how do we incentivize our sellers? Mm. Uh, there is an engine that's running which provides them with timely information so that they can act on their own right. and they can either give us more stocks to sell or mm. they can reduce prices on our platform. Yeah. Similarly, we have an engine going on with bloggers. A lot of bloggers have an automated way of getting information. So, for example, when you are a blogger and you upload mm -hmm. your videos on Purple.com's platform, on an everyday basis, you get to know who's sharing your content, mm -hmm. who's liking your content, how many views are you getting. So, all I'm saying is that I think create processes and engines that work on their own rather than do ad hoc events or 
or any of those things. All right. And, right. and you have said that you like to leverage the knowledge of people in the business who know yes. about their products. Yes. Yes. And, and you're more about the tech and creating the system yes. for them, the yes. ecosystem yes. for yes. them. So talk to us about that, how tech has turned out to pretty much be the backbone uh, or the USP of your operations. Right from, mm -hmm. I think, what products to sell, what salons to recommend, yeah. uh, what content to recommend, uh, to how to get those products on board, to how to help our mm -hmm. sellers and salons uh, utilize our platform to the best of their abilities. I think it's all driven by tech and, and completely built in-house. Okay. Even the warehouse management system that we use, we've built it on our own. So whenever we built anything, we built it for scale from a technology perspective so that we don't have to revisit it every three mm -hmm. months, every four months. Every page on our website is personalized for you as okay. long as you're logged in. Mm -hmm. So if you are visiting a sunscreens page on our website, you will find different SKUs being served to you versus served to me. Okay. Uh, if you are in a particular area in Bombay or in any other city, uh, and if you search for nearby salons, it will be served personalized to you. So I think the entire technology bit has been uh, similarly, you know, the the idea of serving advice to people. Right. So a lot of people ask us questions around the problems they face with their hair, skin and makeup, right? Now, uh, one way to answer that question is to have a lot of people at your back end yeah. and you can sort of start chatting with them. I think it's a very unscalable method. I mean, let's say tomorrow 10,000 people start chatting with us. Mm -hmm. It's going to be virtually impossible for us to hire thousands of people and sort of start chatting. For a long time, we had been thinking, how do we serve advice to thousands yeah. of people who can come and ask us questions every day? And you know, those questions can be uh, can be related to any problem related to their hair, skin and makeup. We would love to solve it as much as we can. Okay. I think the only unbiased way to do this is to use via, is to do it via technology. Mm -hmm. If we have humans serving information to you, it will always be biased towards what that human thinks about that product or service or venue, right? So what we did, we basically got a lot of user generated mm -hmm. content. Uh, so as I was mentioning to you earlier, 70, 80,000 people have created content mm -hmm. for us. This could be in the form of reviews, question and answer videos, images and so on and so forth. What we've done is we've served this content to our bot mm. in a very structured manner okay. and now the bot has learned what to answer when you ask what question. Uh, it's a work in progress. Right. Uh, it, I think it will start becoming extremely good in probably two, three months from now. Okay. Once we, WhatsApp opens up its APIs mm. to us for chat, yeah. uh, I think we'll be able to offer an incredibly high quality beauty advice experience which is largely automated. Right. I mean, what I mean by largely, 70-80% of queries are answered and completed by the bot itself. For There will always be some yeah. queries that the yeah. humans would need to intervene right. whenever the bot fails. Uh, we'll try to work on them as and when they come and sort of solve it. Yeah. So right now our bot is live on Facebook Messenger. Okay. You can come and shop with us on Facebook Messenger. Fascinating. Yeah, and you can just add us as a friend and yeah. you can start shopping with us. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's really the way forward, isn't it? You know, it's a big, yeah. it's a big uh, channel which mm. is unutilized right now, right? I mean, yeah. there aren't too many people offering such things on Facebook Absolutely. Messenger and WhatsApp. Uh, we want to be the first ones to get there. Let's take a very quick break. We'll come back and continue our conversation with Manish Taneja, founder of Purple.com, in just a moment. You know, you've also just moved to the marketplace uh, yes. model, yes. Uh, which has been a huge fill-up for you. Yes. Uh, talk to us about how you finally made that decision yes. and how it's improving efficiency. What forced us to make that decision uh, uh, were two things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one, uh, regulatory framework. Yeah. Uh, if you have to raise foreign capital, you have to operate as a marketplace in India. Mm -hmm. That was sort of the kicker. I mean, it, we had to do it because we wanted to mm -hmm. always raise foreign capital. Uh, given that Indian capital is very scarce, that invests in sort of uh, Indian private businesses. Okay. I think barring three funds, I don't think there are many Indian funds which can deploy a lot of capital in India. Okay. But just to come back to that, you yeah. you actually haven't been looking for mega mega fund uh, raising as such. Yeah, we haven't been. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't. We never we wanted didn't want our to restrict yourself. Yeah. To only three yeah. four people, right? Yeah. I mean that would be stupid at our part, right? Yeah. And I think the second reason why we mm -hmm. sort of moved to marketplace was. Uh, Given that we are in the business of variety, mm -hmm. right? We are in the business where we offer you 40, 50,000 products, yeah. uh, almost mm -hmm. 20,000 color cosmetics products. It is virtually impossible for us to stock every inventory yeah. by paying for it and 
to be able to know which color would sell in what quantity in a given week mm. right it is virtually impossible for us to know one way to know this is we employ hundreds of people who yeah. manage these brands which is not the dna yeah. the dna is efficiency therefore we said how can we partner with partner with thousands of sellers mm. we bring them on board each seller is managing 50 to 100 products that seller knows best which products will sell which color will sell which nail polish mm. would sell uh we just enable them with a lot of information that is actionable yeah and they do a lot of work for us right and obviously they benefit because the sales increase on the platform yeah. so what we've done is we have given them access to a lot of technology data and our warehouses mm-hmm. they can stock goods in our warehouse we will do all the work from them from logistics packaging okay. fulfillment perspective but we will not buy inventory okay. we will sell it earn our commission and pay the rest to you So this is obviously working for you It's now that you switched to this. It's worked extremely well for us. But did the fact that you've only switched to this now yes. um hold you back in some way in the first couple of years? Yes, so I'll tell you uh, I think your vendors or sellers um need to trust you mm. uh, before they can start keeping inventory in your warehouses and that you haven't paid for it. Okay. Right? So it's a process which is of gradual trust that you build over a period of time. Second, people need to see sellers need to see a big opportunity on your platform. and only then will they want to block their inventory with you right we only arrived at scale in probably last 6 months of 2015 i think and therefore that was the opportune time to go to these sellers who had been working with you for 3 years saying now we have arrived we are selling mm. 10x of what we were selling 6 months ago why don't you now keep your inventory in my warehouse every for every one the process will become much easier we will do all the Yeah. fulfillment warehousing packaging everything just keep your goods in a mm-hmm. warehouse you understand which products to sell keep the relevant products in the right inventory okay. in a warehouse and we will do the rest of the job so the timing was right mm. from both scale perspective as well as from a technology enablement perspective okay in terms of pricing um what are the kind of margins uh, that you look at what are ideal So we don't look at margins mm-hmm. we look at our commissions. Okay. Uh, we've moved from a VAT business to a service tax business, okay. right? We don't okay. sell anything. Right. We just enable sellers to sell on our platform. Okay. So on an average we make commissions of about 25%. Okay. Uh, so that's based on the selling price the selling. of the goods. So let's say if you are selling a lipstick hmm. of MRP worth 1000 rupees for 900 rupees yeah. on 900 rupees we would make our 25 to 28% commission. and then the rest of the stuff right. is ours so right. uh we take care of as i said fulfillment logistics right. everything and is taken care of yes. okay yes. and um is there a kind of discounting push across uh, the beauty space uh, is it are, are there very thin margins for the sellers uh, or or are they able to command are uh, the kind of prices that are viable for them so you see seller economy works very differently yeah. sellers are basically sort of distributors mm. they love to make 2% per month on the investment that they are putting into the business okay they are not the demand generators they are also not the brand creators right so seller is some family in between right. who is actually want who deploys let's say 1 crore or 10 crores of capital per month mm. wants to rotate it very fast and wants to earn 1 or 2% as the yeah. roi on that business so will the sellers make a lot of money uh, i think they will make a lot of money at scale right uh, it's our job to ensure that their money gets rotated very fast mm-hmm. so that the working capital is not stuck with you or anywhere else okay. right yeah. so initially we started with paying them in t plus 15 days mm-hmm. t being the day of dispatch yeah. we tried to reduce it for some sellers to t plus 3 days okay so they get okay. their money every day okay within 3 days okay and they yeah. don't have to chase after and they <laughs> it it happens automatically yeah So it happens from an escrow account. Right. So the money from the customer comes into our account. Mm. Let's say the customer paid us thousand rupees. We will deduct our two fifty rupees and pass the rest to you. Okay. So when we want our money, mm. we have to pay his money. Okay. So he never has to chase us for any monies. It happens automatically on a daily basis in a very reconciled manner. And it doesn't create a headache with regard to any returns. No, so we like pay that. him post returns. Okay. or we can sort of settle the returns later, later. i don't think there's yeah, an there's issue there's no issue there okay. actually our returns are 1 and 1/2% that's it so in general also there is not yeah. too much risk on our 
uh, books from a returns perspective. That's a pretty good number yeah. according to the industry, isn't yeah. it? I yeah. mean, compared to like the more horizontal players, uh, that must be very. So I don't know about horizontal yeah. players, but I think about. <laughs> Apparel players, yeah. I think it's definitely much higher than what we witness. Mm. Uh, so I think we try to solve it in two or three ways, yeah. right? Uh, why do people return products? Let's look at it fundamentally. One is probably they saw something else on the app or on the website and what you delivered is actually something else. So they probably saw a light pink color mm. and you delivered a dark pink color, let's say. Yeah. So that's one reason. So the products are different. Second is the product reaches too late okay. and the customer has already decided that they want to buy somewhere else. Right. And I think third reason why people would sort of return products is if they reach in a very damaged condition. Right. Right. Uh, the way we have tried to solve the first piece, which is the accuracy of information on the website, is that we have done it two ways. One is we ensure that every photo that goes on the website is actually vetted by our team. So they actually see the product and they see the picture right. and they ensure that it's correct. I think second thing that our users do a great mm -hmm. job for us is they actually keep giving us information that something is wrong, something is right and they actually upload a lot of information. Okay. So they upload their nail paint pictures, they upload their stuff mm -hmm. and that helps users or customers or potential customers with the right information to decide whether to buy it or not. I think the rest of the things are in our control. Okay. Delay in delivery is in our control, mm. damage is in our control. Sometimes people return products because they are very close to expiry date. So we have checks and balances in our warehouse so that we don't ship anything that's close to expiry. So I think uh, we worked on it at the right time. There are multiple set of processes that mm. are live in the company which ensure that the customers don't have a bad experience and therefore are not forced to return products. And, and you also have a fair amount of repeat customers, right? Yes, What's the number yeah. there? On an average in any given month, I think about 70% of our revenue comes from repeat okay. customers. So let me give you some statistic yeah. and I think that's important for yeah. most people to know. Uh, uh, so from last year, January, when we raised our Series A round, I think it happened by end of January last year, we've grown about seven and a half times. Okay. That's so phenomenal. have we grown slow? Yeah. I don't yeah. think so. Uh, have we grown as fast as probably what we could have done? I mm -hmm. think the answer is always we could have done better, right? I mean, we've never content with what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me tell you the more interesting fact. Uh, so while our revenue has grown up seven and a half times, our commissions have grown 10 times, mm. which means that we've increased our commissions over a period of time. Okay. And our marketing spends have grown up by 50%. Okay, wow. So compared to 7.5x, yeah. 10x, we are 1.5x on our marketing spend. Okay. Right? right. Which means that there is competition which spends mm. probably significantly more amount of money to get the same customer, right. which we don't do. Okay. Now, those are interesting stats. And while we're on stats, uh, yeah. uh, you know, you talked about growth numbers. So what would be the kind of, I don't know, top line or GMB? What's the figure that you'd like to look at? So right now we are tracking about, I'd say 140 to 150 crores of annualized GMB. Okay. Right? okay. On that, we get a commission of about 25 to 28 percent. Fine. And where yeah. do you see that going in the next? So year? I think you're for this year, already at seven and a half uh, yeah, uh, times growth. Yes, yes. So going ahead. So I think for this year, we I think we are targeting 300 crores of GMB, mm. okay. which is the current financial year. Yeah. Uh, haven't planned for too much <laughs> after that. Okay. I think the I, I think company is focused towards achieving uh, the next nine months of growth. I think you're the perfect example of slow and steady uh, wins the game. <laughs> so I don't know have we won it yeah, yet or well, not, but yeah, I think we're on track. Yeah. yeah. We'll take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll also ask Manish what's coming up next for Purple, what they're experimenting with, and what we can look forward to. Back in a moment. Some of the things you've mentioned indicate how your processes are extremely efficient. Yeah. Uh, both your early rounds have also been about, I think, five million or so uh, yeah. from angel investors and Ivy. We're possibly looking at uh, another round coming in any time. Yes. Yes. Is that also going to be, uh, once again, around the same amount? And it's how going to be around the same amount. It's okay. going to be close to five million. Okay. Right. And, and how would you look at utilizing that? Uh, so I think given that we've already yeah. become marketplace, yeah. we are extremely working capital efficient, right? As I've mentioned to you mm. earlier, we've already broken even at the EBITDA level yeah. in West and North. We still lose some money in, in South. So the idea is to open a warehouse in South as quickly as possible and cater to the customers of South mm. in a much faster and much cheaper manner. 
See, the cost of logistics of shipping from Bombay to Bangalore mm. is significantly high. Whereas if you do local deliveries in Bangalore, right. I think the life is going to be much better for our customers as well as for our PNL. Okay. Uh, so I think that's one. I think second is invest a lot more in technology. I think we've under invested. I mean, uh, we've just started touching the tip of the iceberg from a chatbot perspective. I'm sure we have to prepare ourselves for massive amounts of scale, massive amounts of personalization. Mm -hmm. I think I think the entire e-commerce personalization is probably just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. I think the best segments that have done great personalization is music and books. Mm -hmm. I think everybody else is just far away from there. Right. Right. So, right. I think invest in technology, uh, that's our DNA. We want to build some high quality offline experiences that are technology enabled. Okay. Right. Okay. It would not mean opening our stores. We are very categorical about it. We don't want to go the offline way. Okay. What it would mean is it would mean a very immersive experiences at offline locations. It could be virtual mm -hmm. reality enabled. It could be augmented reality enabled. It would just wow our consumers that they would have seen nothing like this earlier in their life in the beauty space. Mm -hmm. It's already started to happen in the West. Mm -hmm. I think one or two years from now and it should, should see it happening in India. Just before we, we wind up. Sure. Uh, um, you know, you actually gone whole hog when it comes to the, the industry in the sense you've created an integrated play with products and yes. with experiences. A lot of others have chosen to go either yes. one way or the yes. other. Yes. How has that worked for you? So I'll tell you what was the hypothesis behind why we went yeah. about doing it. Um, so I think one was the market forces, mm. right? Uh, uh, beauty is a 18 to 20 billion dollar industry yeah. in India. About 60% of it is products and about 40% is services. So services is a segment that we couldn't ignore. Right. Yeah. Just from share of wallet perspective. Yeah. I think the second hypothesis was that and you know, this is the ideal state that probably purple.com would get into. Yeah. What we wanted to do always in our life was we wanted to be like a Google search bar where we say, come back, come here f to search for any beauty related query. Mm. We will serve you the right content, which is not created by us, but curated by us. We will serve you the right mm. products and we'll serve you the right services at the right location with the right stylist. Okay. okay so it was as detailed as that. So therefore... When our customers come and ask us questions, you know, uh, can you recommend me a high quality pedicurist in my area? Right. We always wanted to answer that question. See, beauty is a very integrated category. Products cannot solve all the problems. You always need some services help. For example, you might buy 10 nail polishes from us, but to get that perfect nail art, you actually have to visit a salon. Okay. It's not possible to always yeah. do things at home. We wanted to help our customers with that. Similarly, if you have problem with your hair or skin, mm -hmm. not all hair or skin products can solve problems. It's sometimes very important to visit a high quality hairstylist, dermatologist, mm -hmm. skin specialist. We wanted to get all of them on one platform and ensure that our customers don't have to go from one platform to the other to mm -hmm. find this information. So how much of your revenue comes from the, the salon play and how much of it comes from the product play? So see, uh, the salon play started late last mm. year. Um, it's in early stages of evolution. Okay. We are also figuring out the right engines and processes there. Uh, again, slow and steady. Mm. So we are going uh, as slow and as steady as we can, ensuring that, you know, we do the right thing. Uh, so 95% of our revenue comes from our product marketplace business and 5% of our revenue comes from salon marketplace business right now. Okay, and have you yourself gone and tried out one of those pedicures? <laughs> so actually there's a very unique pedicure close to my, uh, close to our office uh, at a salon and they call it ice cream pedicure, I've tried it. <laughs> yeah, I've tried yeah, it. I haven't tried that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you should. Right? So we, we are in that business. Uh, yeah. So I've visited many salons. So every month I visit a new salon. Okay. Uh, just trying to figure out what they are up to, right? I mean, unless we experience that business on our own, yeah. uh, we would not be able to create solutions for that business. So I have visited pretty much a lot of salons in the last three, four years. So right? and I, so, and I have never repeated, <laughs> and I have never repeated any salon, right? So it's it's in that quest of discovery that I've tried to visit a new salon every month. All right, Manish. Thank you so much for joining us on Ian Great talking thank to you, you today. No problem. Thank you, all you the so best. much. That's all from us today on the show. And if you haven't yet tried, maybe it's time you checked out purple.com. Thanks so much for watching.